Welcome to the Podness with Face, Pat, and Tiz. What's up, guys? Welcome to the bar. So with three friends, separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, and have a weekly conversation that you can join in on. And as always, I'm the one third of the partners. It's your boy Tiz, and I'm along with the other third of the partners, the Padawan here, Mister. Your girl's looking at me while you're still there, sir. And I'm along with Dramatic Paul. In this face, damn it. Shit. Going on. And shit is what you eat when you uh go against the people. Who eats shit? <laughs> Whoever's going against defeat. Sound like somebody got kicked in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wanted to try to say something cool and that shit did not go off well. So we're gonna keep it on moving. Um, hey guys, how you doing this week? Saturday. <laughs> How'd I think? As y'all can see, uh, one major difference this week is uh, being paid in the same motherfucking room. So that's really dope. Uh, we got a new club here that we've uh, formed, and uh, you might be seeing this format for the foreseeable future. We'll get you. And two out of the three partners in the same place, and then we can get the third partner. Then you'll see. Then you'll see us pretty much looking just like the avatar at the bottom on the left of your screen. Yeah. So, uh, make sure that y'all uh, keep on supporting because if y'all can get the bread up, then it makes sense. Um, so keep on supporting, keep on sharing, keep on liking, keep on commenting, all that good shit. And uh, yeah, we up keep in this bitch. We've been here this week, man. How y'all been? I feel like it's been a minute. Well, I've been okay. I've been okay. I've been okay. Yeah. Okay. Is Car issues. Car issues once a fucking again, but. At least I'm alive to deal with car issues. It could be another way around. But hey, I'm good. I'm Gucci. I'm here to deal with it. So that's always a positive. Um, what about y'all black people? Um, okay, first of all, I've been down here in Atlanta for since 2008. I had a good year run with my nigga Pat. Uh, and then he went back to Virginia. And he's back in Georgia. Been here for a minute. And uh, for the past week, this has probably been the most time I've spent with my nigga. Since he's been back in Georgia. And he's been here almost two and a half, three months. So, I'm going to say, this has been amazing. Uh, I'm really enjoying myself. Uh, we have Club Tiz. We have Club Partner. We have Club Tiz and Pat. We have Club Pat. We have Club uh Hey, we're a club, whatever you want to call the place where, you know, a partner can come in and make the shit and be comfortable. So that's where we at. Um, I wish you was here to see the setup. Like, you could literally come in right now and do one of your uh, burn it early or one of your shorts or whatever. And I got set up for you to be able to do it however you want to do it. Like, I'm ready. So uh, it feels good to finally have a space and a, a situation set up the Really, the way I want it, I guess you could say. You know what I mean? Like, uh, still working on the background aesthetic. That's the part that I want to uh, improve upon. However, uh, as far as the actual logistics of shit, this is probably the closest I've gotten to like, okay, I can host a real podcast here. We can really do the partners here. We could have a, like, I could have a third guest right now and the shit will work. So that's the dope. You know what I mean? Like, it, it can work. Um, in life, life is good. Uh, financially, things are well. Um, the things don't go well financially. Financially, things are well. 
So that's always a beautiful place to be in for a minute. Um, yeah, man, life good, man. Pat, how you feel? I'm chilling, man. I'm good, bro. Like this, <laughs> this has been wild. Like I uh, like uh, forget this nigga be here sometimes. Like, oh shit, my nigga's here. Oh, what's up? <clears throat> and then we get in a random deep conversation, and then we randomly start joking about shit. This is awesome. I got more to say. And face, we we could talk uh, after we you know get offline, but uh, life is good. Man. A lot of ees and shit. You know what I mean? And um. <laughs> With that being said, man, uh, I don't know who got the first topic, but I feel like it's me. Yeah. So I'm not even about to waste time getting into it. I'm going to just go ahead and uh, kind of lay y'all my premise down and then just kind of let the conversation go however it happens to go, if that makes sense. Y'all with? Yeah. Well, let's do this motherfucking shit. Let's talk this motherfucking shit. All right, so... My topic this week is uh, I've been dealing with a lot of uh, when I see relationships, I mean, whether it be business, mm-hmm. whether that be uh, familial, or whether it comes down to a situation of them. But I'm more just talking on general relationships, like your relation to another human being in general, right? And I'm finding that uh, in all three of those aspects, honesty is like leading the way for me right now. So I just wanted to highlight some ways that honesty could be there and then see what y'all thoughts are on the topic. So this is when it comes to everything, whether it be legally, whether it be uh, your ability to hold down a car note, a house note, uh, whether it be your ability to hold down a relationship, whether it be your ability to hold down whatever, right? I feel like it comes down to the trust and loyalty that you have, and that starts with the trust that you have between you and the other party, right? So, my premise is that honesty is the number one factor to whether or not any relationship will be affected. And I have three ways in which I'm willing to back it up. So uh, I'm going to start with uh, in business. Right? When it comes to keeping things above table, it always leads to more prosperous and long lasting partners. So what I mean by that is if me another person I'm doing business with, say we both going in and we're investing into a nightclub person or a restaurant or some type of establishment where people have to come in and pay money to get some type of service. Mm-hmm. Strip club, whatever the case may be. What happens is the more honest I am and above board I am, the more likely this person is to actually be able to communicate with first of all, because True. they're going to understand my exact position at any point throughout this process. Because what happens in business, um, you may go in for, say, me, you, and Pat, Faith, right? We go in for 10000 a piece. That's 30000 we go going into this business on, whatever. Whatever the business is. Food truck, whatever. All right? And then some shit comes up. We got to spend an extra expense, right? Mm-hmm. Now, at that point, it goes past business, goes to how much do I trust you and how much do I feel loyal enough to you to be willing to spend this extra? Because at that point, I could just say, you know what, I'm going to fucking pull out. Y'all find somebody else to invest in this. And y'all figure it out. Or I could keep it going and I can add in this extra money and we can keep it going, right? So at any point, the ability to keep it above board and me to be able to tell you my exact feelings on this business decision, my exact feeling on the next step of this business decision, mm-hmm. that is going to influence 
our future in depth. Because if I do you right by that, right? So say I tell you, hey, this is how I'm feeling, this, that, and the third, da 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 da. We decide as a group because of what I said, we're going to keep on going. Because, mm-hmm. like, we all believe that this is going to be the next thing. Who we do it, da da da. Because I spent that money, but because I was honest with you, the next business venture, you will be more inclined to say, you know what? When I go into this next investment <clears throat> that I get, I'm going over here, I'm about to buy a new restaurant next. Yeah. I, I paid for this. Theater, I'm going to pay for this restaurant. The first person you're going to call is me because now you're like, okay, for one, his money good. Yeah. But for two, it's a lot of people money good, but are they good? Yeah. Exactly. This nigga kept it real with me when he could have said whatever and blew smoke up my ass and made me feel great about this investment. It won't. But he told me what he felt. Now we still agree to do it, but because he the truth, he's willing to spend money. Next time, because I know it to the day, good and the truth. A lot of people got good money. Mm-hmm. It's hell of money on the street. Their ability to keep their shape, their ability to do what they said they were going to do, or their ability to admit whatever, mm-hmm. even when it may not be comfortable for the rest of the investment. Yeah, I w- I would say like. Especially from your past experience looking at all these people, all business owners around, like the consistent availability of um, you being honest, being upfront with the money and everything over and over again in the past. And like, I never had problems with this person before. He's always been on time with certain things and whatnot. It'd be, it'll almost be out of the question to even um, question if he's good, if we should do further investments in that situation. Because it's like you got to, you got to the point of uh, being comfortable with that person w- with business in general. Like I know for a fact this person do good business because I've been doing consistent good business with them so far. Exactly. And, and usually with that, that's, that's, that involves being honest, that involves having your book straight and everything, and also, you know, paying people on time and stuff like that, too, or whatever. So, and even if, even if the first business fails, or whatever, it's just the simple fact, because businesses fail all the time, and what I've been, with these business owners and millionaires have been telling me that most of them, most of them, your first business it's always fails the first. biggest lick <clears throat> yeah. that then pays for all of the failures. Exactly. It's just like the record business. It's like ninety percent of them, them, them artists fail. Mm-hmm. But them ten percent that do succeed, they succeed so much they offset the cost of those ninety percent that fail. Mm-hmm. And that's really all business is. And then it's the amount of like, and then it's basically multiple forms of income. That's that's it. That's pretty much it. Most of these, most people think because they're a rapper, they're getting stuff off of their rap. Rap money, rap money for most of these rappers, they're making more money off of maybe sponsorships or endorsements or all the other stuff they do outside of actually making music because making music is expensive, pretty much. You're another part if if you another podcaster, you know how much how expensive it is to actually podcast, making music is pretty much twice as much as that. Like maybe probably ten more times more than that because you know you have the engineer and the artist itself. I'm ranting, but and what I'm saying is with that is that even with those most rappers that are on now is because they had some kind of hustle where they're being for off of them being a musician. And in the businesses, majority of these people that have uh, successful businesses is because often the strength of the other successful businesses they already had set up. They, like they have a bread and butter business that no matter what, I know it's coming in. And then you have your other side project, uh, one that looks like it's about to hit, one that's a little struggling, you know, th- things like that in general. But it's all built on, I-, I trust this person because this person has been honest with me in this team of 
people have been honest with me and consistent for a long period of time. Yeah. I hundred percent agree. Faith, you got anything on that before I go to the next uh reason why I think that honesty is the number one driver of relationships? Move on, my my brother, move on. Indeed. Uh so we go to um so that's business, right? Now when we talk about familiar relationships, so we talk about familiar relationships, friendships, like those relationships that are more profound, right? Um Honesty becomes the glue that holds you together by accountability, right? Like the best friends that I have usually hold me. They they are willing to tell me, "Hey, you're a little off right now." Like uh, one of the reasons that Faith and Pat have made it twenty some years of my life is because they're both willing to tell me the things that I may not want to hear, but I need to hear in that moment to drive me to the next place. So it may not be that comfortable thing, but it's that thing that's like the uncomfortable truth that like makes you, oh, you know what? You're right. I'm tripping. You know what I mean? And because they're willing to tell me that, that truth, that honesty, it leads to more trust. Because if you're willing to tell me my fuck up, then I know when you're telling me that I'm doing something good or I'm tell- you're telling me I'm doing something great, then I know that it's coming from a real place of faith. Because you started from a place where you're willing to tell me the negative. Even if it hurts my feelings, you're still willing to give me that accountability of, hey, you're not doing this. That's not the move. Don't do that. Uh-huh. No, why would you? Like, you see yourself but there. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, whatever the kick in the ass is that I need at that time, you're willing to give me that. So I know that the next piece is when you give me the blessing or the, like, praise. It's coming from that same place. Of, I'm willing to tell you the fucked up shit, so you know when I'm telling you the good shit. You got, it. Mm-hmm. you know what I mean, and and I think that that's a big piece of trust that comes into a family. Like, one of the biggest things that makes me feel close to my family is the fact that I feel like they're willing to be honest. With me. They're willing to tell me the things that I want to hear, I don't want to hear, whatever the case is. They're willing. To Tell me those things, and because of that, I remain at a fact. That's familiar relationship. How do you? Well, everything you said is true. I think what happens in uh, if it is a situation in familiar relationship is that sometimes people become too familiar. And they, let's say, they feel entitled to having a um, second, more more than just a second chance. To get one. They're like, oh man, you know that's my friend. Be like, you know what I'm Never tell the person how they're going to understand. You know what I'm saying? So, I think that's like the only other thing when it comes to familiar relationships. It, but the thing about familiar relationships is that a lot of times you're already, you, you, you've already have a bond with that person in general. So it's easier for you to trust them. You know, it's easier for you to open up to, to them in certain ways. Paul. So like, that's, that's just the, I, I would say that's just the gist of it here. I'd say out of all other relationships, that that would be the the one. Well, you know what? I'm going to stop right there. If you haven't even brought up, you probably have one more relationship you want to bring up before I even say that state <clears throat> in, in general, which was going to be like it, 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 a family relationship is in friendship relationship is the easiest one to be like. Um, if you don't in a in a real relationship in a real friendship in general you're automatically expecting honesty because why would i lie to you in general that's not going to help us but i know you got one more relationship to go so i need it's to see <laughs> um, so so that's the first two but then when you get to the third Marital or 
whatever your origin is. I don't, I don't know. You know what I mean. Like your boo thing. Um, I think that provides the boundary for me. Like honesty provides the boundary for me. Here. And like the communication structure that you're going to use mm-hmm. for your relationship. So like me being able to tell my woman what I like, don't like, into, I'm not into, I'm turned on by, I'm not turned over. That provides a boundary list, a, a list of things that like, I am comfortable with, but I'm not comfortable with, which gives the framework for the relationship for the rest of the time you're together. Like, okay, so these things are on the table. We can always discuss them. They are always an option. They are always something that could possibly Right, but then you also have these things that I'm just—they're non-negotiable. These things can't happen, or we can't. Mm-hmm. And when you set those ground rules from the jump, I honestly believe that you place a um, understanding that's kind of past where most relationships are. Like most relationships, they fail because it's a sense of. Uh, either be or resent like mm-hmm. either if you're doing something that I'm not allowed to do mm-hmm. or that I don't know about, mm-hmm. or I'm betrayed by the fact that you did something I didn't know about and it affected me in a way that I wasn't there right so when you're talking about uh, honesty it provides that boundary framework where like you know from the jump because I'm honest with you that hey I'm into this, this, and this. If you are not, you have the option now to exit, as opposed to me blindsiding you and you finding out I'm into this because somebody else in the street tells you, and now you're fucked up and you feel betrayed because now I've like lied to you or I've withheld something. But if I'm just honest from the jump and I just lay it all out, then we start from a baseline of like, Everything is here. Uh-huh. We both look at what's there, and then we figure out if do we want to even proceed past this point. You feel me? And that's what, everything is there. So now I know your boundaries. I know what you're comfortable with, what you're not. You know what I'm comfortable with, what I'm not. And now we can we have a framework of like we start there. So now it's easy to go from there because you start with knowing my my ugliest and my best. You start with knowing, hey, I'm cool with all these great things. I'm also kind of nasty like this. You feel like, hey, Sean, uh, it may come a point where we have to go here. That's what I want. Now, are you cool with that? And then the girl has the option to then say, hey, yeah, I want that too. That might be great. Or she can be like, hey, let's pass what I'm comfortable with. We go uh, over here with it, all right? And, and you can negotiate from there. But it's just like any other transaction. Like, I think um, relationships shouldn't necessarily be transactional, mm-hmm. but they should have the honesty of a transaction. Like, mm-hmm. When I go to the store and I look at the price tag, it <clears> says <throat> blank 99. And then I also know that in the state that I'm in, it has whatever tax plus whatever the national national whatever whatever the tax are. I know those things. Those are things that are readily available to me. I can process those things and understand that when I pay this, I'm I'm getting this, and I I want this, and this that the value is there. If the value ain't there, I can decide I'm not gonna pay that. And damn, but I get the money. Mm-hmm. Relationships should feel like, like when I'm with a woman, it should feel like, hey, all these things are what you like. I can do that. Or I can't do that. And then we go from there. Then I can text that ass. Pause. Now, that should <laughs> always be a point. That's, that's women. Hey, Pause. <laughs> or PC. Pause. Ah, 
what I was saying. <laughs> what I'm gonna say is <laughs> ah shit. What I'm gonna say is this. Um uh, at times. Whatever it is, the communication got a mask there. Like if you if you just keep everything above board, everything always goes well. And I find that to be true in all three phases of relationships that people have. It, it, that, like, there's a whole bunch of different things that work. Like, it could be a uh, commonality. It could be, uh, you know, you got things like uh, my ability to, like, our ability to just vibe, right? Our ability to have the same work ethic. Right, but I feel like the thing that binds every relationship comes down to the honesty. Because I can work well with you, but if we don't have honesty, then I don't trust you. And now I can't work well with you because now I'm always questioning your work ethic. I'm always questioning something about your work that now makes it hard for me to believe that you're going to put the same work in that I'm going to put in, or that you're going to fulfill your your end of the bargain on the way. Right. Mm-hmm. Um. If it's familial, now it's when it comes down to the shit that make our family great. Do I trust you to be there? Can I tell you the family truth? Can you be there when it's time to negotiate Paul Paul's uh, funeral expense? Can it, can I know that you're not gonna steal from all of the family? You feel me? And mm-hmm. that should happen. So like. Okay, you got that. And then on a relationship level, uh, can I trust you to be there when I tell you the shit that I'm into sex? Can I trust you to be there when I decide that I don't like this thing that you do? Are you still going to be ready to have this conversation? And that all stems from like the ability to have honesty because honesty builds trust. Like As long as you know what you're getting into, I can trust that you're going to be that thing. If you tell me, hey, I'm a liar, I'm a robber, I'm a cheater, I'm a silk, and I know that at all times I need to guard my shit, but I'm probably going to respect you more because I now know that that's what you are. And I know that I got to guard my shit. So if you steal from me, that ain't you, that's me. I let you in knowing all of these things. You came in with the Eddie Guerrero theme song. I knew what you were. And you are very clear. Yeah, and I think that all relationships work that way. Because, like, if I tell you, hey, as a business person, these are my end goals. Like, I think uh, when you look at music groups uh, with some boy bands and shit, they always fell apart because the dude that wanted to go solo never just had to sit down with his homeboys and was like, hey, man, after about the second album, the third album, I want that to be my solo album. Mm-hmm. Now, y'all can do y'all solo album if you want. You do whatever you want to do. You can take the name and go do your own whatever, but I want to go do this. And if you tell them niggas that from the jump, then the niggas got two albums to decide. <clears throat> I don't want to ever go solo. I want to always be a part of the group. I don't want this. I don't want to do this. But at least you give them niggas the option to then, and now you go from there. But like when you start from a place of, well, I'm going to tell y'all niggas now. This is the podcast for three niggas. Plus three niggas. Somebody said something to me today. And I don't remember. I don't remember. What it was. <laughs> I don't remember if it was one woman or another one. It was the two women. And then I asked something. And then they said something. And it was like, yeah, you know, because you know the podcast. And is that gonna be around? It? Oh, I was like, oh, you gotta understand the part of yourself. Now I might do some individual shit that might not last for three years. But the part of I'm gonna be doing this shit when I'm not. But ever, ever. I pretty much plan on pulling up with y'all niggas. And that's whether we get the same phase or not. Because I figure technology will people get better. At some point we'll be holograms and we'll be all sitting in the same room we got. But so, ever, uh, ever. 
Um, yeah, yeah, like it's certain shit that just makes sense. And uh, I feel like the farmers is like our friends. So that shit just kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. And uh, we got a thousand and thirty-seven people that. I feel like it makes sense to them too. So we don't talk about it. technology, friendship and shit. You know what I'm saying? Y'all ain't even on that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? That's my Wu Tang talking really shit voice. Like I wanted a Gundam robot that looked like me that had missiles to shoot out the. That'd be cool. Uh, almost, you know, just it still like got that Gundam feel. I like, I'm, I'm old school. I like Gundam. And now, What's I, Gundam style? Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, this will be shooting out Madrid's and shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. For some reason, I thought I had to do the robot. I pressed the button, y'all. Call that nigga Ted Bundy. His mic. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. Pause. I can tell you what not to do while you're on the podcast. Let's not go there, dear face. Let's not. Yeah, for me. For me, it damn sure was. Uh, uh. <laughs> uh, uh. Right, so, um. I think the. Uh, the, the what one... I, all right, so first of all, the Ted Bunny. No, he didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say that. I said, uh, the butt. Pat is so glad to have a button. So I got so he this is the first time he got the board and it's working in front of him. So the last time, so so it's only been two times me and Pat have been in the same space to record. It's only been, I think, one time me and Faith have been in the same space to record. On all on both of those occasions, there was no the board either didn't exist or it didn't work. So there was no buttons for like people to push. Like the last time Pat was here, I remember the mic was like real low. Like it was just, it was just a whole bunch of like complications. So, so, like this, oh, more time. and then I was close, so you can barely hear what the fuck I was. So I sounded like this. If I don't play that, I pop. Yeah, he sounded like that. Stop, stop. Oh. <laughs> he about to push the button again. Um, but basically, the button won't work. And then Faith was here, and then the button didn't even exist. I didn't had a board yet. So at the end of the day, uh, if you get a bunch of sound, just know Pat is really excited to have the board in front of him, and it's actually working and functioning. So there are a lot of voices. Yeah. I'm just waiting to talk about my my my, my... <laughs> might be one of those. Yeah. Okay. But uh yeah, um uh, as far as my topic, that was pretty much where I wanted to go with it. Uh did you have one or what are we going with it? Oh, well, face ain't had no topic, but I mean, I could always talk some shit about everything that's going on in the world like I love to do. But let's just go down the, the rabbit hole face and get on the face rank. So on my, my daily adventures, I went and got some food the other day, right? And of course, I had to deal with a shitty ass customer service person. And everyone knows I hate shitty ass customer service. So it just led me down the rabbit hole of thought like, if you got to be shitty at your job, why come to work? Why you 
If you wake up and know, damn, I got to go to this motherfucking place, don't go to that motherfucking place. That solves your issue, and you don't have to cause nobody else no goddamn issue. Stay your shitty ha- attitude having ass at home. Solve <laughs> all of our issues. You know? It's this one motherfucker over in, um, what's the donut place, man? Um, Dunkin' Donuts, I think it is. Yeah, Dunkin' Donuts over there in Petersburg, man. It's this one fat motherfucker that works in there, yo. I don't know his name, but I hate going in there because this nigga customer service is just, just deplorable. I just want to take this nigga and just throw him over the counter because that's how bad he just pisses me off. And not even what he says to me. It's what he says to everybody else that pisses me off. Like, wow. The attitude he gives is like somebody just snatched, just snatched his drawers through his pants, through the pants loop, right off his body. Like, your attitude is just shitty for no reason. With everybody, white people, old people, young people, black people, just people, period. You don't like working with people. So why the fuck is you out working with people? I don't get it. I don't get it. Fat man, if you ever hear this, fat man, please quit Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts on Crater Road. No, quit Dunkin' Donuts on Wagner Road in Petersburg. Please, the fat black man that worked there, get rid of his ass. Because this shit is just, just horrible. Y'all are going to lose a lot of fucking business. I know it's just, it's just donuts and coffee, but goddamn, y'all still serving people that pay y'all money. Get rid of this motherfucker because his attitude is horrible. <coughs> Next. Now, over in Blackstone, I might have said it before, but over in Blackstone, now, it, it, it's a uh, Blackstone, Virginia. It's a Wendy's. Now, it's the most ghetto motherfucking ass Wendy's ever. Like, I think they was waiting for COVID so they didn't have to open their doors no more. Because since COVID came and you didn't have to open the doors, these motherfuckers ain't opening inside the restaurant since. It's 2023. Open the fucking doors, nigga. Everybody don't need to go through the goddamn drive through what the fuck is going on that everybody got to keep going through the draft? Y'all motherfuckers don't open the door. Y'all niggas lazy as fuck. Lazy as fuck. And can't do mail. How you got to register and can't do fucking mail? The total 510, I give you 2010. You going to look at the 20 and look at the 10 and have a problem. Bitch, you don't get my damn money back. Hey, I'm about to beat this shit off, man. That nigga sit on me. I'll be back. Hey, I'm about to beat this shit. Oh, shit. Damn, that's too crazy. Look at that. Oh, nigga, we about to hit stop this shit going. Oh, nigga. Damn, you lost your motherfucking man. Hey, I don't give a fuck. I'm about to beat this shit in, nigga. You got a little Hey. I think you better get some bottom lip control, bitch. What the fuck is wrong with you, man? Nigga, just spit on me, man. It's like a full spray. Oh, shit. <laughs> like a dusty. Bitch, I ain't no crop. Nigga, I don't want no fucking toilet paper. I ain't got to wipe my ass. This is a paper towel situation. At least a, at least a hand towel. Nigga treated me like a sorry bitch. <laughs> Nigga didn't even give me a warm towel after. Nigga just fucking do. Man, what kind of shit is that? Pod Squad. Hey, look, man. I love my brother. We've been brothers for 20 some years, man. But I, I just put a lot of time in my life, man. It ain't been too much time in my life. I've been spit on in this, in this manner, man. I, I don't. I'm. This shit hard to process. Uh because it was a full, it was a full dust. It wasn't like a gleep real quick, like a that shit slipped between the tooth. It was like a <laughs> <laughs> nigga, what the fuck was wrong with you? He's not used to recording. He's not used to having a partner recording right now. We gotta get used to it. So normally it wouldn't gotta be right there when he spit. Fuck away from me. No, you spray me no water, nigga. I'm gonna shoot you. Oh, nigga. Oh, nigga. I will shoot the shit out of you. Oh, nigga. Oh, this is spray me no wall towel, bro. Oh, no, bro. Hey, oh, hey, man. Did he bring you a warm towel? <laughs> Did he bring you a warm towel, bro? Oh, 
I don't know if it was warm or cold, but that beer was soaking wet. And that shit came. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, bro. I'm going to tell you, man. You give a nigga a napkin or a paper towel, man. You don't get no nigga no damn toilet paper, no goddamn wet rag. Nigga, what the fuck is wrong? I'm going to with his after sex antics, <laughs> he'll wipe off with this. <laughs> ah, been, nigga, I'm sorry, nigga. Do you understand why? I'm, yo, hey, bro, I'm, li- I'm, li- <laughs> hey, I'm holding my hands, bro. <laughs> Literal, like I am grabbing my my fingers between the other fingers, like like this this nigga. Oh, what 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 is happening in life? Where is my life dropped to? That this is my reality. This this what that nigga said. This can't be life. What's this is- Pay ah! him with a dirty Sanchez and like, huh? Wipe yourself off. <laughs> Clean yourself up. You be the. This can't be life. Oh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I ain't never dealt with. I'm just. It's all right, Pam. It's okay. In Blackstone, wind is very deplorable. Yes, it is. You turn your face the other way back. I feel like you were laughing. Yeah, it was. It is. <laughs> Just turn your face the opposite way. Just know that it's coming. Cause face gonna say some wild shit. You know what he gonna say. You know he gonna say some wild shit. I don't even know why you sit there and look at me. Like, you like, like nigga, this. Be doing this. Shit. This is the third year. I I know we ain't been in in in, in person a lot. I know it's a you know uh, by distance, separated by brotherhood. But the, I mean, separated. Oh, good. You know the shit, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Hey, little bro. Oh, yeah, oh, God. The oh, God, man. I'm going to. I'm, I'm just... It took air, a bit of brother. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, brother, he ain't doing that shit. I really did. I, I but, did. Oh, God, yo, if you spit on me, I'm about to shit. I'll just say it. <laughs> <laughs> I want y'all to know I'm crying under these things. <laughs> As both a laugh and I'm really crying. Like it, it's sad, it's bittersweet. Because I know this nigga. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my oh, god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. I needed that one. I needed that lab. Mm. That was a good one right there. The way that shit is going still, it's just going to be a big deal. <laughs> I thought he would have hit me with the with the Hulk and Loki punch. Yo! Yo! Oh, God! <laughs> you be God. Yo! You almost caught that, uh...
But uh, the nigga uh, Kevin Say did a podcast where they was, and then and they come on Lulu, and then uh, they said, you know, that shit went all the rails. And uh, oh my god, man, damn these damn glasses. Uh, god damn. This is gonna be the best episode we ever had. <laughs> Yo, oh God. You know how you know how people been telling us like see that one clip away from going viral. I really believe Tim is about to knock this shit out of bed. It's about to be the clip of the century. Like, oh God. Cause it's like clickbait, but it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the pod squad know like oh, these niggas, but, like, but it kind of almost went up I just want y'all to understand like this is how real of brothers we are in this thing like, oh! it almost went way way that way um um like it was Oh shit! I got real snot and tears. Like that's how real shit just. Oh god! Hey, what are you doing, man? Uh, go ahead, and continue with the rant. When this was deplorable because. Oh yeah, it's gonna be dirty and shit on the outside because you can't get inside. Because like I said, the motherfuckers kept the doors locked since motherfucking COVID started. So. 2023, you would think you open the motherfucking doors. But no, everybody got to go through the fucking drive through You know how long of a fucking day you motherfuckers have had to drive to this motherfucker? Like, I'm going to quick pick something up quick before I go to the house and got to cook something. I'm just get something to tie me over. But goddamn, by the time you get from the order to the fucking window, it goes on a tie it over to that. Damn, I'm really motherfucking hungry and I'm about to smash this shit. And then I'm still be hungry again. Like, what the fuck? It ain't no tie me over by the time you get to this dirty motherfucking line. Like, goddamn. Hire good motherfuckers. I think they just hire motherfuckers. And and, and then and hold up, hold up. These motherfuckers be out, standing, line, smoking weed at the job. Like nigga, I know it's decriminalized, but damn, have some tact to your shit. Fuck. Fire all these niggas. Matter of fact, close the restaurant down. Close the location. The Wendy's in Blackstone, Virginia. Close that bitch. Close the bitch down. Close it. <laughs> Close that Man. dirty motherfucker down. Tell the Wendy's mm. button go hit. <laughs> know that, yeah. <laughs> but that's um, all I got for my rant this week. Well, uh, I ain't bad at the rant because I will tell you this. Have y'all noticed that fast food service in general? Not just at Wendy's and Black, but just at fast food restaurants in general, it's kind of like lower. Like, you Trash. have certain places that are like still kind of good. Chick fil A's mainly being the one. But like, it's getting slower and it's getting more egregious in the way they treat you as far as like the base. Like, if you ask for a basic item, it's like, uh, <sighs> bitch. Oh. Man, you don't grab that goddamn honey pack, bitch. <laughs> it's right there. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I can't get down with the huffing and puffing. Like, yeah, motherfucker, you got asthma. The fuck is you huffing and puffing for? You, you, you need a pump on this asthma pump. Bitch. You need some. You need some albuterol out of this bitch. Is that your problem? You need some goddamn albuterol. The fuck you better take that huffing and puffing somewhere else. You at work, bitch. Do your goddamn job. Shit. If you don't want to, leave, goddammit. It's, it's five other motherfuckers back there that can do this shit. Leave, goddammit. You ain't got to be here. Your boss pissed you off, leave. You ain't want to come into work, don't come in. Quit, bitch, and find something else. You ever UPS leave. hiring, goddammit. UPS is hiring. That like Biggie said. <laughs> shit. You Niggas mad and shit. Goddamn, nigga, you like <laughs> I'm trying to get a word in there, do I?
That's why you couldn't hear us. I'm sitting over here talking like shit, right? And like, oh, this nigga, I can't get a word in edge right. But you keep going because my shit on mute. <laughs> I was like, damn, nigga, let me say, what? But did you, but did you ever think, of, well, what happened? Jesus. Oh. Man, nobody can understand what I'm saying. <laughs> but anyway, uh, well, on on that kind of vibe, I will say uh, with the fast food going slower, right, I noticed it's like no matter where you go, like I like so I go to Burger King, right, and you know how you're supposed to put it in mobile order. The mobile order supposed to make your shit faster so you can just pull up and get your shit. Man, I put the mobile order in. I pull up. I still wait in the line a good 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. They tell me to pull the fuck up. And then I just <laughs> sit in front of the line. While their time is on time for they little grade so they can get their little 92 or 93. <laughs> and my black ass sitting up there with not a damn sandwich in sight. Just a... <laughs> That's half full now because I'd have been sitting out here 20 minutes. So now I got Thursdays, so I'd have drunk half of that. Now I ain't got the whole drink to go with the meal. So now, man, because I, you know, the whole drink go with the meal. That's why you order a large or a medium. It ain't really the fries. Like you can have a medium, a small fry, medium fry, big fry, whatever. As long as you got the sandwich and, a, and some fries, you good. But it's the drink that kind of make the thing, you know, because that, that determines how much you can wash that shit down. So if you order a big ass burger, you know, I order a fucking double impossible burger with some bacon. God damn it, I'm gonna need a large drink. But now the drunk have my drink because you know push me up forward. Can you please pull it forward, sir? I don't want to pull forward. I'm gonna sit here. And, and Get my question. fucking food. Quick you question. knew I was coming. That Quick question. On yeah. that order, you said a double impossible burger with, with bacon. bacon. I don't now eat bacon. Is, now, now is that a uh and now is that fake bacon with the fake no, with the, with no, the fake bacon? You know, goddamn fake bacon. Oh, okay. So you mix it. I can't match. eat I can't eat beef and cheese. I can't eat anything that comes from a cow. Every oh, okay. other animal, I can fuck that animal up. I can eat a goat, oh. I can eat a goddamn pig, a warthog, a meerkat. Oh, I can eat all of all of so lion can, can, get, come back. can get beat the fuck down with some with a with a burger. I can eat a baboon burger or whatever. Well, you can't wait for that dodo bird come back in the shape. Nigga, what? That ain't nothing but a, that ain't none but a better Chick Fil A sandwich. That's a thick for that's a thicker Chick Fil A. I heard it's good with honey barbecue sauce. A thicker Chick Fil A. No, you got to put honey packets of ketchup. That's the, always a combination on chicken. <laughs> you can get them honey packets of ketchup or ranch. And ketchup. One of those two and ketchup. That Polynesian. Hit. I ain't mad at Polynesian. Because you can go mambo sauce and ketchup. And Polynesian ain't nothing but mambo sauce like bastard cousin. It's like the mambo sauce without like two of the flavorings. <laughs> I like Hawaiian. But it's his cousin. They definitely can. That and sweet and uh what's the uh Goddamn! Uh, what's the what's the pink shit from uh Chinese food? The duck sauce. Swashong. No, the the duck sauce. Oh. And Ooh. like the uh, what? I think you talk about a bitch gave you a massage that you like too much. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck wrong with you, nigga? What wee wee, nigga? What? <laughs> We ain't finna talk about no wee wees this evening. Uh, ain't, gonna be no, ain't no dick talk tonight. No, nah, not tonight. We saying yes. <laughs> ain't no Tecumseh. With yes or C. We're not going to say it the French way. Oh, well, well. We? We, we. It's French. No, that's yes, yes. Why would the fuck would you say it twice? Mm -hmm. That's disgusting. We just talked about not saying it. See, like, see, I told y'all we bringing that dick shit in here, man. I told y'all it's all with him. He found a way to sneak it on in there. First face is the no, one I said we not gonna talk about it. Then here you go, Thomas. Oh, we we no, we is we is yes. Fuck out of 
motherfucker is going to say yes, yes, for a yes, yes, y'all. Or you don't stop until the beat, y'all. Or keep going. All right. Well, maybe that. That, that does make sense. But I'm just saying, and and the times that we talk about that, that don't make no sense. Yes, yes. We you just wanted to say we we make the shit fun. He be trying to do that shit, y'all. I'm telling you, I'm trying to tell you, he be trying to catch niggas all guard with that shit, trying to be funny. Huh, let me just throw a just throw a cock in here, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gotcha. Gotcha. You didn't know we was gonna talk about it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Like a jungle sometimes that make you wonder how that dick can go in there. What, nigga? What? What you say? <laughs> ah, I got you. Ah. I know I'm exaggerating, but it's funnier when I exaggerate. What? Look at look at face face. He looks happy about it. Look, that he is entertained. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? No, they like to laugh at your random uh dick talk. No, when they laughing at. That's the name of the new talk show. <laughs> what? We we. <laughs> Dick talk with Pat. No. None. <laughs> his co his co his co host is a nigga in a banana suit. <laughs> <laughs> if it ain't right. And this and this nigga look like he got on yellow in the lights. <laughs> <laughs> he don't have on yellow. No, tan. I could have switched the hand on yellow the whole fucking time. It's tan. Ain't he banana wish? Tan. Dig talk. Tan. <laughs> also take the color of sand. DT with pink. That nigga, L that no. nigga, banana color no, with eggplant lips. <laughs> <laughs> what you say, BTB? What is that? Said, Tuberculosis? P and that I think about to no die. You, you got a cough? Nah, I didn't get BT a cough. BT with P? Nigga, you what? Nigga, what? You got COVID? Not COVID. I said I had a cough. I ain't had no COVID. Tuberculosis. Coronavirus. Oh, shit. <clears throat> <clears throat> <laughs> they could be grunting like the man that fucked Forrest Gump, mama. <laughs> on a positive note, on a positive note, now the gas station at the end of my street used to be owned by this other motherfucker, and he sold it to these other motherfuckers. Now these other new motherfuckers, they cool as shit. I love the customer service because when I when they see me walking to the store, when by the time I get to the counter, they already got what the fuck I want on the counter. I ain't even got to say shit. I'm like, damn. I don't know if it's good or bad. Like, you know what I want, so you're trying to be good at your job? Or you know what I want, so you're trying to get me the fuck about the store that fast? Like, huh, your shit here. Get the fuck about. Well, I don't know how to take about. it. I don't know how to take it. But shit, I'm thing. happy because it saves me some words and some goddamn time. So shit. Big up to the other mm -hmm. new motherfucker. Big up to getting out my shit. <laughs> Dun 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 Hello, hello, NATO, NATO, hello, hello, NATO, NATO. Fuck, where you from? If you don't get, get it, you know what would be good, yo? But it takes some time to fucking do. Hell of a lot. It'll take some time to fucking do. Like, to go through all the episodes we got. Because on every episode, we do this, we do this, this at least one time. Song, we just go to a, a random yeah, song. You know, yeah, it just get a we combination of all the shits. <laughs> we need Jazz Jones, yo. Jazz Jones is the queen of that shit. I don't know who that Jazz Jones person really is in real life, but she'd do that for like all the all deaf shit. She put together all the compilations <laughs> for them, like all of the random, like, okay, so this is all of 
this all of the time CP did the who you finna try? I bet it ain't me. Who bitch it ain't me? Like talking about to him. Have y'all y'all have y'all ever seen that video? The, yeah, ori the original. The who you I with the big so. with the big nigga? He kind of look like Nate Jackson. No, I seen the big yeah. Mm -hmm. I seen he who you? Yeah, cats, we, cats, have, cats. Uh, we had on live. We had on live one there. Okay, bet I could not remember if I put it on there, but yeah, but like Jazz Jones, we need a Jazz Jones because like that shit will take some time. Now I can work on it, but that's gonna. Take I want me a shirt with that big nigga on it. You know how motherfuckers be getting shirts with like a Leo on it and different motherfuckers on it and shit like screen printed on it. Get that nigga with his saying on it. Who you finna try? Ooh, bitch, today. <laughs> I I want the saying. I don't necessarily want the nigga on my chest. I don't, I don't want to walk with that big nigga on my chest nowhere. Nah. Oh, good on that. Hey, man, ain't about to wear that big nigga. Hey, man, that's all you play. Oh. Ain't about to wear no nigga. <laughs> Fuck off me, nigga. Yeah, ain't about to wear that big nigga on my chest, champ. Uh, I'm a, uh, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a rock that sand though. That sand of who you fit to try is hard, right, but the, the big nigga that's on there, tell me some. Who bitch you hate me? No, nah, I ain't about to have that on the front of my shit. I'm going to have pitch for me to put it on my shirt. Only nigga they need to have that on the front of their shirt is a nigga that was his homeboy. If that nigga die, you got to have an R.I.P. shirt. But uh, outside of that, eh? who bit? No, nigga, you ain't about to be on the front of my shirt. Who bitch it ain't me? <laughs> no, 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 no. no who no. shirt you fitting to be on? I bet it ain't mine. Who bitch it ain't mine? Beep 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 beep. Stop, stop, stop. No, no, no. When he was sending no, the emails and no, shit. No, no, no. What you say? You want some Ewok? I said, was that nigga sending an email or some shit? To me? No, he talking about uh, the nigga that did the caps, caps. caps. You know what, face? <laughs> I don't know. The first time I saw it was on uh, All Death when uh, CP did that shit. To, to hear, he was like, "You like the nigga?" Like, Who you fitting to try? And I, I did. I thought it was just some shit CP made up because that nigga be making up some random funny shit. But then I was like, "Let me just type this in caps, caps, caps." And and this nigga popped up. This big nigga just popped up. And the only thing I can find when I type in the original is this loop. Of him just doing it over and over again for two and a half hours. Just who you fitting to try? I bet it ain't me. Who bitch it ain't me? Cops, cops, cops. Who you fitting to try? I bet it ain't me. Who bitch it ain't me? Cops, cops, cops. Who you fitting to try? I bet it ain't me. Who bitch it ain't me? Cops, cops, cops. Who you? Sorry, everybody. He he he's stuck in a loop. The shit do that for two and a half hours. <laughs> so like it it, it catch you. Because, like, the first, like, maybe a, a minute and a half, right? Mm -hmm. You be like, oh, this shit is hard. And then, like, the seventh minute, right? You like, okay. Ooh, I like this. This is cool. Minute 14. You'll throw that laptop, the headphones, <laughs> and everything to connect it to it out the window. Goddamn yeah, brick. Bar and cancel whatever subscription you got that made you be able to hear who you fitting the try. Yeah. Wi Fi be going and everything. You be trying too much. Look at this nigga. Look at this nigga. Look at this nigga. Look at this nigga. Look at him. Well, somebody look at come. Somebody come and look at him. Look at this shit. Look at this. 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 Well, somebody come and look at it. <laughs> look at it. Goddamn cat drink it out. Look at it. 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 Um, <laughs> people that cannot see the podcast, I'm sure they are at a huge disadvantage. I'm sure they'd be like, what the fuck is these niggas the talking about? What are they talking about? Look at him. Who, look he at said, who? He said, look at him. Look at who? Which one of them? It's three of them, man. Which one am I supposed to be looking at? And how do I? Who do you what what they celebrate my distance? But then he said they were celebrating my brotherhood. What the fuck is going on tonight? Are they in the same space? Can you see these niggas? Are they together? 
You know who I, you know, you know what the funniest part about, you know what the funniest podcast moment ever is? When I be in no. a random chat room in the Uma sector, right? And somebody uses my name, like uses the podcast name as if it's my name. Like I am the partners as if that's a title of something like, like I'm the magistrate or I'm the, the, uh, the, the potentate. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the partner. Like, no, I'm not, the, I'm not the partners. We are the partners. Not, I'm, I'm not the partners. Like it's not a thing, it's the people. That's why it things <laughs> like, are real people, not just voices in his head. But that should be funny as hell, cause like you know, in the in the thing, they just see the little avatar and then they see the partner. So they be like, they think they think it's me trying to be like arrogant, like calling myself something like the partners is a, a king of somewhere. Like I am the partners of Iraq. <laughs> From here forth and forevermore. No, like, no, like, no. This is the group. It's all of us. It's the thing. It's the podcast. It's three of us. It's not, we are the partners, not I'm the partners. <laughs> not the partners. Hi, I'm pod. three. And, hi, I'm three and three is me. Yeah. Like, I am the partner. That is the funniest shit I run into. And I run into it a lot when I first introduce people, especially from the Uma sector. And I like say something in the chat room, and then like obviously, like whoever the moderator is or like the host be like, Oh shit, what up, the partners? Are you know what I'm saying? Good to have y'all through here. And then somebody be like, Yes, the partners. You must be a great judge of character. You mean us? Which one of us? That's like it's three of us. Who who you talking about? Me? That's talking a, about BTS? That's a fucking robot. Are you talking about face? No, I mean you. Aren't you the partners no. of this group? No. no, I'm not the partners of this group. I am one third of the partners in general. Which is a group. <laughs> but you would be surprised at how many times that happens as if I don't know what country the partners yeah. is a title in, but we are. We hold some type of a rank somewhere where people be like, oh, so you are the partners? Oh, well, let me extend it. Partners. Do you, know what, do you know what the partners is? I'm not, I'm not a, a the. I'm not a the. Partners. I'm part of the, if that makes sense. Uh, I, yeah, the I don't have a special same. relationship to anything. It's just me. Uh, we just out here. We just chilling. New partners sit. Yeah, but we be on the top of it, just floating. Yeah, hey, heaven for the love. They said just enough. God damn. <laughs> All right. Um. Uh, I'm complete. All right, y'all. It's 11.32. Um, if you want, we can start the good fuckery. I got some fuckery for you. And this is my radio voice. This is the partners. Let's do this. I mean, it's one third of it's, a, it's 11.32. So let's just do <clears throat> a fuckery. A fuckery? Let's... Like, whatever your best fuckery of this week is, or good, whatever the best thing that you want to talk about out of your whole list of the fuckeries you come up with. Bring that. And we'll do that. Because right, I'm going to go to sleep. Well, y'all want to be I see Damn right. Damn right. <laughs> All right. I got one. I got one for you. All right. <laughs> All right y'all, are y'all familiar with the... Uh, do you want to do the whole intro and stuff? A good fuckery out on this shit? We'll, we'll just do the one good fuckery. So we can joke on this very quick. Episode 117? It's episode 117. Good and fuckery! Hey, all right. This is the good and the one good and well, there ain't no good about this. There's nothing. Right. It's just fuckery. Uh-huh. Y'all familiar with the Zeus Network? Ain't them the gay folk? Yeah. Hmm? Them the gay folk? Are they the gay folk? I don't know. No, no. I no, think that's it's the ratchet folk. Yeah, the oh. ratchet motherfuckers. Oh, yeah. so blue face? 
Yeah, it does got that blue face show and all that other ratchetness that be on there and a whole bunch of black B movies. And whatnot. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Floyd Mayweather is also an investor in Zeus. And now um, he actually has a a new fight, uh, a fight that's coming out. I think, let me pull it up right quick so I can give you the full information of it. On Google, him and Jose, him and Jose Aldo, and I think I believe the person was named Aaron. Aaron Calmadango. Yeah, they, uh, Floyd Mayweather. He's against Aaron Chalmers at the O2 Arena in London on February. Aaron Scrotum. Actually, that's like another week from now. Um, but that's not the thing that tripped Dick me. Dick Majors. The trip. <laughs> What tripped me out was the undercard. Who on undercard? I don't know if y'all are familiar with these two, but Tommy Lee mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. Natalie Nunn. Natalie Nunn. I know Natalie Nunn. So you mean Tommy Lee, the man or the woman? The woman. From uh, oh. uh, Love and Hip Hop. Love and Hip Hop. Yes. yes. And Natalie Nunn. Yes. The short, the short fat jump from on Bad Girls Club. That's a lot of cheeks in the, one spot. The, then when I say is, cheeks, I mean chin, big face chin. and yeah. cheeks the chin. on the bottom. Like just a lot of cheeks in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Bad Girls of Reality TV has scheduled the face off for the world to see after entering an upcoming. I think Tommy gonna win that one. Oh no, man! You seen? Natalie I think they gonna beat the shit out of each other. You seen Natalie Nunchin? Yeah, she yeah, has yeah, this side boy. Oh, no, man. She, she, she got the forehead and eye shots. Stay with me, she. That bitch. I really don't have like no Jay particular issue. Lino. I just want to joke about it. That, that girl, chin, boy. That girl, chin. She got the goddamn. That girl, chin. That girl, chin. <laughs> that girl, chin. chin. Yes. Look. That girl, okay. chin. Is that unbeatable. Chin. Right there, that girl, chin. Unbeatable. Right, but beautiful. You, but this is the type of things you see on Zeus Network, wretchedness such as that. But I, I you said yeah. um, Tommy Lee had got her uh, there, Tiz. I would say yeah. I feel like Tommy Lee done fought more than the other girl. I feel like if Natalie Nunn is able to pull off a headbutt, no, nah, she ain't gonna get that off. I feel like the other girl. Oh, nice. It's you know, gonna be one of them quick jumps. I'm going to grab you by your hair and just fighting. keep all it whopping your shit. You ever seen Farrah Funeral and Miss Hustle fight? Miss Hustle? Have you ever heard of those two battle rappers? Miss Hustle and Farrah Yeah. If you've ever seen the fight between them two, you understand what I'm talking about. That's what I think it's going to look like. I'm going to look that up. They got it on YouTube. Yo, oh, it's right on YouTube. Farrah Funeral beat the brakes off that bitch. She grabbed her by her hair and just like uppercut the fuck out of shit. Like, not nah, my, my. It's the battle rap girls. P H A R A funeral. And then Miss Hustle fight. And you will see them. They on the they in regular clothes and Farrah Funeral is short as fuck. Miss Hustle tall. And Farrah Funeral grabbed her by her big ass head, pulled her down, and just started molly whopping her with uppercuts. And that was the fight. So, like, I feel like it's going to be one of those, like, where, like, Natalie might be, like, maybe the physically more dominant as far as, like, what should happen, but on paper, but I feel like on experience and, like, I feel like Tom Lee is used to jumping on a bitch and beating the bitch ass. I don't know that Natalie Nunn, outside of words, has necessarily had a lot of physical altercations. True. So, I always go with the experience and that whole, like, when you know what could happen and you cool with it and you comfortable with it, I mean, you can take a punch. I mean, you willing to give a punch. You willing to go to that route as opposed to somebody who may not have done that and they may not be willing to go. They just may be just there. So I don't know. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. I just thought it was funny that they had her up there. And then the side that they, when they showed like the, the actual match, they showed that one picture of Natalie Nunn where it's just all. Who else want to match with that? Huh? Who else want to match with that? That's the only picture she got. It's always all chin. All chin, dog. Like, unless you're talking about an Asian lady that like live in a monastery, she gonna always have a big ass chin. Look like M. Bison <laughs> chin. <laughs> like, 
Oh my god. She looked like the crimson chin from goddamn barely our parents. Like Saga! Tiger, Tiger, Tiger uppercut. Tiger knee. Tiger knee. Tiger uppercut. Sweet chin music. Tiger, Tiger, Yoga Flame. Yes, it's because he actually does. It's yoga. cold. That's the reason why it's stretched. All right. Well, uh, well, that was my fuckery for this week. Hey, well, there ain't no fuckery. It's a black business. Anybody got one? Um, I got a black business. Oh, uh, I like to uh, give a shout out to uh, to official Chef Red. He was out there at the uh, Super Bowl party this weekend. Dog, let me tell you, he he, red velvet. Yo, boots. them wings and them fries make you kick somebody in the face. Yo, he made some red velvet waffles mixed in with Oreos. Now I don't really be doing too much about that, and I'm not really a guy that do sweets too much. But that was the best tasting diabetes I've had in a while that was some great awesome diabetes or whatever i would feel i would goddamn eat that diabetes almost almost every week i can't do it too much that was so much. <laughs> that was way too much sugar i should be high as eat man. that diabetes was way too close to eat that day. pause no 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 i said diabetes hey show your face all right <laughs> I just didn't know where you was going. No, I'm not going there. I'm like, oh, that nigga got a discount. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right. I'm, tripping, I'm tripping. I'm doing too much. All right. Um, but no, on the real, uh, them fucking wings, dude. Them wings will make you smack your mama and her sister and your grandma. And pull your grandpa out of the, out the grave and smack him. Be like that shit was the best fucking wings. And I and I don't you know me like uh it, well people who know me mm-hmm. obviously y'all know me but like people who know me know like I don't eat my wings with like any sauce on it or nothing. Like I like plain fried wings. Well, these wings had sauce on it, and I don't know what the fuck sauce it was, but it was the best fucking like it was like this glaze. Oh my nigga. I damn near man. It it will make you literally drop kick a buffalo. Uh so yeah. Anything face and I mean anything past say past this, just know he ain't lying. And uh go get some. You know, I'm extra picky about shit. So if I say a shelf is actually worth actually, you know, doing business with, you you mean that because I'm picky as hell. But official chef red on Instagram, if y'all want to take a look at his work here. But and he's a Capricorn. Always love, always a he's friend a- of the pot. If you're a Capricorn, and damn make sure right. you get the wings, because I'm damn sure about to get me some more. Uh, uh, the next time they have an event there where he's cooking, mm-hmm. uh, he's gonna be my chef. Uh, wings and fries, order on me, my niggas. Uh, so yeah, get those, and uh, after you get that. Spend some money with us. You want to give us money? Just go to uh, dollar sign partner tears one. That's dollar sign P O D N A T I Z one, and you can send us money that way. Or you can also go to Spotify, sign up for a membership for four ninety nine a month, or buymeacoffee.com and give us and, and donate for as little as up to a dollar. And then uh, if you want to give us money and get some back, face how they be doing that shit. Well, what you can do is you can go to rtreyclothing.com. Yes, that's rtreyclothing.com. Yes, the, the, make sure you get the website. That's rtreyclothing.com. That's A R T R E clothing. Dot damn com. And we will never spell clothing because Facebook no. is way back. And you should be smarter than that. And after you spent your money and you bought. Your great clothing, and you sit and you want to send us your pictures of you and your gear. Pat, how do they get in touch with us every week? 
as you can see all around the screen, there's multiple ways to get in contact with us. The main and easiest way is the at sign T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. That's at sign T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. And you can use that with any of the social medias, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch. I know it's one more that I just seem to forget. It was TikTok. Facebook. TikTok. And on Facebook, Tiz, FacePat are the partners. And that's it. And uh, we've given y'all another episode. This has been a wild one. Um, visual watchers, people who watch on YouTube or Spotify, y'all are going to enjoy this. People who listen only, God bless you if you make it through the entire episode. I understand if you don't. But this is one of them ones for the people who are like actually like kind of here why this is going down and kind of see it. Yeah, it's a lot of visual shit happening that we're responding to. So yeah, we apologize, but uh like we continue to improve. We're working on it. We work on sarcastic shit in the background with this monotone voice while we go into the podcast. It's hilarious. Indeed. And this is the first time that we've actually been in the same room at the same time doing the podcast. So it's a new experience. It's some new things to get used to, but we about this bitch, bitch. And we love y'all. God bless you. God keep you. God save you. Now, as the Lord goes between me and thee, please make sure you have a blessed week. And as always, peace, motherfucker. If I talk, I'm going to have to. I am going to have to. Oh, shit. Uh, oh, that's crazy. Uh, hey, bitch. Ah! <laughs> <laughs>